you walk through some of the areas that Hatchfield is redesigned, um, one of the most prominent ones, there it is. Let me make sure the machine is off there so I can save the demo. So we design, we, don't, we only put our thumbprints on mechanical parts. One of the parts that they were experiencing repetitive failure with was this plastic arm or this plastic ball catch. And what was happening was uh, they were vacuum forming it and then there was so much impact after the impulse that these, that the plastic parts were just cracking and then the crack would propagate and final, finally, after, you know, so many shots, it would just fail catastrophically. So we redesigned it uh, so that it would last a lot longer. Another area we suggested, we made the recommendation for this rail here. Uh, so the ball wouldn't fall out of the catch area. Um, of the catch basket. That's the whole point, right? So that you wouldn't have to chase after you rebounds. And then the highlight of the machine, I would say, is, is the net and the pull features. So we wanted a good user experience. And to achieve that, we thought one sweeping motion, once you uh, extend all the holes, had one sweeping motion that expanded the arms. So let me just show you what that looks like. Pin, you push this down and all the arms retract. And then you retract the arms to get into a stoke position. So what we did was we basically just took the idea from a tripod and flipped it upside down. And that was basically it. If you're interested in learning more about the Grind Basketball Machine, check out this playlist here where we talk with CEO and founder Thomas Fields about the history and mission behind Grind. You can also find links in the description for more information.